Uh... Hi! I'm Arthur, and this is part 5 in a 20-part series I am doing to cover 20 second founding chapters in order of the legions from 1 to 20. Do you need to have seen the other videos to understand this one? No, but it would make me happy. So, this chapter dissection is going to be formatted a little bit differently. I mean, it's not like any of my videos are formatted in a set way anyhow, but this one's going a little bit out there even more so. The TLDR of why is because the White Scar successor chapters are weird and usually underwritten. So, post-heresy, when the legions were divided up into smaller chapters, there were a lot of issues that arose from this. Some legions were so small that they couldn't really make additional chapters. Some legions were so big that the majority of the chapters that came from the splitting of the legions is from them. But the one thing I noticed between all chapters is that you very rarely hear much about the White Scar successors. Everyone has a favorite successor chapter from the Legions, but the White Scars never really get brought up. Perhaps I am incorrect, as I only knew about a handful of White Scar successors going into this, and only by namesake, and some I didn't even know were White Scar successors until I had to do the research into this. So today's topic is a result of that. When splitting up the Legion, Jagatai asked for all his successor chapters to follow their own path. So unlike a lot of the chapters, like the Dark Angels or the Imperial Fists, the second founding successor chapters of the White Scars are pretty different from their base chapter, still adhering to that initial call to action that Jagatai Khan issued to them all those years ago. Sure, some of them still prefer the speedy hit and run tactics of their gene sire, but the topic of today is kind of interesting. As for the Marauders, the way I think of them is Imperial Fists by way of White Scars with a bit of a sense of humor. There isn't much lore about them. Slightly more than the Sons of the Phoenix, I mind you, but significantly less fan backing, so there's a lot less theory crafting around them. In lore, they are often kind of seen as a bit of the side piece to other armies, mostly just being there to support more well-recognized armies such as the Minotaurs and their parent legion, the White Scars. It is interesting doing the deeper delves that I do as there is a lot of references for them. See, here is a good tip for everyone who wants to be a lore YouTuber. If you are going to research a chapter, go on the wiki page. Don't read it. Go down to the bottom of the page where the citations are, and you'll see all the sources they use to write the information above on the wiki page. Reading from those, you get the book titles and the references as to where you can get first party information, and then make your own opinions as you go by. I think reading wikis and Reddit pages can give you good information if you are trying to fact check something on the fly, but if it's your basis for the mainstay of your knowledge, it can remove a lot of the color that you could bring to the conversation by not reading that initial book or that source piece, like if it's from a White Dwarf magazine. A good example, in one of the first party references, a single image of a Marauder Dreadnought and how you can interpret it. I think it just looks like a plain old Dreadnought. And then you see on one side, it simply says Old Painless, which I think is pretty cute because that's the gun side, the side with the big shooty bits. I think it implies that even though they have a hard ass name, the Marauders may in fact have a bit of a sardonic sense of humor. So that is something I kind of read into when reading the minor references they have in the lore. Same with other chapters, it's a good thing to kind of dig as deep as possible and get as much information as possible. Another interesting bit of lore about them is their combat style is more typical of somewhere between Imperial Fists and Iron Hands. They are known for having fantastic marksmen and heavy artillery rather than firing off at warp speeds on motor motorcycles with swords revving. There isn't too much to know about them other than they are incredibly reliable warriors to work with. But the part most people would find interesting and the whole reason I chose these individuals for this video is their connection to one of the biggest civil wars in the Imperium's history outside of the Horus Heresy. Hey guys, did you know that Space Marine successor chapters can have their own successor chapters? 
Yeah, it's, it's pretty funny how that can work. Essentially, it's a mix of either gene seed tithes or just them choosing to muster another chapter. Usually they're told to do so beforehand. It would be kind of funny if they could just make one whenever they want. I feel like they'd get in trouble. When these new chapters are created, they're usually created in small batches, and this is called a new founding. So a direct successor of this chapter, the only successor, if I'm being honest, is a very important Space Marine chapter in terms of the lore. I'm not going to go too in-depth with them now, because they are a topic for another day, because I find their entire story very interesting. But the main things to cover is basically the Marauders are the original chapter that birthed the Mantis Warriors. Now, if you don't know who the Mantis Warriors are, they are the Space Marines in this specific image that are not the Carcharodons. They were one of the first chapters to side with the secessionist forces in the Badab Wars. They sided with the Astral Claws in their crusade to fully occupy the Maelstrom and avoid taxes. I think it's neat to think about the connection between these. I will likely do a full video on the Badab War and cover a lot of the chapters from it, because the Badab War was one of the most interesting conflicts in the entirety of the setting, and one of the reasons I started collecting Minotaurs in the first place. It is unfortunate that the White Scar successors do not get as much love as they should though. The Marauders are cool, and I can see if you painted the White Scar bikers this shade of yellow, they could definitely cut a very imposing figure on the tabletop. But aside from that, I think a very fun story that has yet to be written is exploring that kind of connection. Sure, there are legions that see successors of them fall to chaos, but I have never fully seen a successor of a successor chapter fall to chaos and get the opinion of the initial chapter. The closest I've ever seen is the Star Scorpions turning into the Pure, a chaos warband in Ilara's Vale. They ended up speaking with a member of the Space Marine chapter that was to replace them in number and iconography, and so on. But it's hardly the same. I just wonder if the Marauders would feel shame for this action. Do they feel like they are responsible in some kind of way? Sure, the Mantis Warriors are a redeemed faction after the Badab War because they went on various penance crusades, but they still carry that indelible mark on their service record, which often has other Imperial forces feeling a bit weary around them. So unfortunately, that's everything we know about the Marauders. They have fought in various different campaigns that are important to the Imperium, but I think they are rife with potential and they could definitely get some good writing if left in the right hands. I'm not saying Aaron Dembski Bowden, but I'm saying Aaron Dembski Bowden. They did get a few mentions in the Ultima founding as they received reinforcements for their chapter from the Primaris gene line, but other than that, that's kind of the most recent piece of lore that they have. I think this kind of storytelling is a good thing to incorporate into 40k. It's just unfortunate that they themselves are not visually stunning in art as they just look like imperial fists without the black trim around the shoulder pads. I think they are a chapter that deserves more interest, and I believe that all White Scar's successor chapters and all minor chapters deserve some degree of appreciation and mentions in the lore. Looking these guys up on YouTube, you won't find much of anything. And I think that's a travesty. I feel like covering the majority of the weirder chapters and the more well-known chapters, it kind of creates this self-serving feedback loop of everybody wanting to see the same chapters over and over again. So I'm always going to try and give a voice to the smaller chapters to see what other people think. So speaking of, what do you think of the Marauders, their line of succession, the White Scar successors, and the Bad App War as a whole? Let me know in the comments. Also, remember to like and subscribe as it helps the channel out significantly. Alongside that, I want to give a special thanks to my channel members, and if you want to see my content early, or even see exclusive content, then become a channel member today. Before I go, I'm sorry, there just wasn't much to go off of here. Not every one of the Space Marine chapters are secretly super wicked cool. Sometimes they're just generic yellow Space Marine chapters. Their logo was kind of cool, though.